Hi, Danny Monforti here from Regal Technologies, and today we will be continuing to build, debug, and analyze our remote control robot. Today we will be continuing to evaluate our robot's battery by first capturing and then reproducing the operational power of our robot while it's in motion. In order to capture our operational power draw from our battery, I've got our current probe already connected to channel 1 in yellow, and I've got our voltage probe up here connected to channel 2. And then what I've done is I've set our robot here up on a stand just so the tracks can freely move without it moving, just to make this test a little easier. So to begin with, I'm just going to have it start moving, and we'll see across the screen in yellow from our current probe a rather um, ramp-like sort of signal being drawn, and then up top we're seeing some slight voltage draw changes over time as well. But for really this test, we're going to be really concerned mainly with our current draw here. So the first thing that we're going to do now that we've got it all stopped is we're going to take a couple measurements. We're going to first go in, we're going to add, and we're going to find, take our frequency of channel one, just so we can get a frequency of how often each one of these, um, the sort of frequency of the signal. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go take some cursor measurements so that we can reproduce the signal with our electronic load. And to do this, I'm going to use our manual cursor cursor here, and we can come in and we can use these to, say, start with the top of our signal, let's actually put this down where the signal is, and then drop this down, and what we'll see is our signal is roughly going from 0 amps all the way up to 2.3 amps in terms of our amplitude. Next thing that we can do is we can switch this over to our X sort of mode. And we can actually determine how long it's going to take for the signal both to rise and fall. And with this information, we'll be able to calculate our slew rate that we're going to need. So I'm first going to move our X over. And now I'm going to move our Y. And this will give us our change is about 470 microseconds. And if I move these over again, We'll now get our fall time, which looks like visually a little bit slower, but we'll just confirm this by taking some measurements. And we'll see our fall time is also 580 micros, um, microseconds as well. So it is a little bit slower in falling. So when we're reproducing our signal, what we're going to do is we're going to set our, amp, our amplitude to go from 0 amps to 2.3 amps. Then we're going to set our slew rate so that it's slightly faster on a rising edge and slower in our falling edge. And it's roughly the same sort of signal, so we can actually use the continuous function on our electronic load. The last thing that we can do on our oscilloscope is we can save our reference so that when we're doing our similar sort of test on our electronic load, we have something to compare against. We're going to do this by going into our reference menu and then hitting save reference. And now I'm going to change our offset here just to move it up just so we can see our reference and we can see that it was copied. In order to recreate the same current draw we were experiencing while our robot was operating, we're going to use the continuous function in our electronic load. Once in the continuous function, we've got a couple different settings we can go through. We can set our range. Since we know the top of our function is at 2.3 amps, we don't need to change our range from 6 amps. And we're going to go ahead and enter 2.3. And then we'll enter 0, because it was going from 0 to 2.3. Finally, our rising slew rate, we're going to enter 0 0.005. And our falling, we're going to enter the same. And then for our frequency, we measured a frequency of 964 hertz. So we're going to enter 964 hertz. And then our width, because it's equally matched, both rising and falling, and how wide our signal is, we're going to leave it at 50%, and we're going to leave our trigger to be transient, our transient button as well. And we're going to hit apply, and we're going to turn on load on, and press train. And what we can see with using the continuous function, we can see a roughly similar sort of shape that we are getting in terms of a current draw from our robot itself, which allows us to do continuous testing on our battery without involving our robot so that we can determine how long it's going to last under a charge, or how well it's going to last, or if there's a drop in power over time. 